to my spirit when pastor was uh, giving the intro, whatever. Let's everybody just close your eyes right now. Let's just relax. Thank you, Lord, for the worship that went forth. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Have your way, have your way, have your way today. Come on, folks. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Have your way, have your way. One more time. Have your way today. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do tonight. Lord, we are receptive to what you want to do because, Lord, I believe that all of us desire to change. And I thank you, as Pastor always say, it's the Holy Spirit, it's your power in us willing to submit to that change. And Lord, yes, we all fall short, and yes, we all make mistakes. But Father, as we make those mistakes and as we get up, let us continue to move forward in the changes that you desire to make in us, Lord. So we ask, Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way, have your way. We ask this now in Jesus' name and all God's people say, amen, amen, amen. 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 Let me just ask this real quick. And you don't have to raise your hands if you want to, you do, cool, if you don't, that's cool too. But how many of y'all can say, you know, Will, you know, I've kind of had a pressing week this week. Anybody? Kind of a pressing week this week. You see, as time moves along, and as this thing is getting ready to wrap up and we're about to go home, it's gonna get hot. Yeah. It's gonna get real hot. And one of the things that the Lord reminded me that if you really study the apostles and if you really dig into the word, it really got hot for all the apostles. It really got hot for the apostle Paul. It really got hot for Peter. It really got hot for John. And so I believe that maybe God is preparing our hearts for that. See, he's going to get us out of our comfort zone, church. Because, see, a comfort church is not going to be an effective church. I better say that one more time. A church that just wants to be comfortable is not going to be effective out here. And we know, we know that that doggone enemy, he doesn't play fair, does he? He will sucker punch you. He will kick you in the knee. He'll bite you on the ear. He'll pick you up. He'll, he'll do everything he can to cut you off from the power that's made available to you. Because we got the power. And it's made available to us. Yes, I love that song. I got the power. Okay, let me, let me stop. Let me be, let me, okay, let me behave myself. See, Michelle done got me off track. Let me behave myself. Amen. And I heard I heard a pastor say today, and this was really profound, that the enemy is after two things. He's after your keys and he's after your power. I'm going to say that one more time. He's after your keys because the Bible says that Jesus has given us the keys to the kingdom. But how many of us are using our keys? 
And as we use those keys, then that's going to unlock greater power. That's right. Amen? And it's that power that will enable us to be able to function as kingdom citizens here on the earth. Okay? Now watch this. Now, now, now again, we're, we're not perfect. We're human. Because I think even Paul at times, he, he's like, man, Lord, how much of this do you think I can bear? Because, Lord, this is a heavy weight that's on me. Think about the Apostle Paul. He's been beaten. He's been shipwrecked. He's been starved. All the things that he went through. And yet I know that there had to be some point in time where he's like, man, Lord, this is heavy. But then when it got heavy, what did he do? He turned to the one that can relieve him of that heaviness because Jesus says, yo, my burden is easy and my yokes are light. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So now I've been talking about having the confidence of God. You know, we put, had a couple of things there. And what I want to do is I want to kind of curtail and finish up or maybe recap what we taught last time. And then I want to keep moving forward because, see, it's this confidence that I know, me personally, I have to live by on a daily basis. And as things continue to progress and as times continue to get worse, I mean, if we just watch the news, we're going to see that there are just some serious things happening in the world right now. When you got North Korea launching uh, satellites out into space and they're hoping that, uh, uh, what's the thing called, uh, where they can knock out all the electricity. What is it called? Uh, what is it, EMP bomb. They, they want to set off, they, they, and they did that purpose on, on purpose. They launched that satellite because eventually they're going to get the equipment or the power to be able to launch those EMP bombs. And once they do that, once they launch that over the states, our power is gone. Mm -hmm. See, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, we get so caught up in our lives and we get so caught up in this, that and the other that we don't realize the times that we living in. And that's why they say, was it the sons of Issachar? Or was it the sons of Issachar that said, you, you know, we have to be aware of what times that we're living in. And we're living in some serious times, y'all. So therefore, I believe that if we just stick with the word of God, we stay close to Jesus, then we will have the confidence to be able to get up day by day and live an effective Christian life. I told Pastor a little earlier today, I said, sometimes, Pastor, I wonder if, 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 I'm, if, you, if I'm making a difference. I'm, I'm just going to be real, okay? Can I be real? You know? But then, you know, Pastor and I started talking, and it's like, wherever you go, you are making a difference, dude. It's because, why? Because it's the kingdom of God that's in me, and it's that kingdom that makes a difference on the earth. It's not Willie Tillman, it's not my flesh or my clothes or my this or my that, but it's the kingdom that's inside this man that will make the difference here on this earth. And so as it is with me, so it is with you. You are kingdom people. And we have to learn to live kingdom on this earth. Amen? Because once they discover the kingdom, then it's that kingdom that's going to trigger that thing that says, you know what? I don't know what it is about that particular person, but there's something that I'm missing in my life and I need to get myself together. Right. Amen? And so this is why we must have the confidence of God. Amen? So when you have the confidence of God, watch this. The confidence, like I didn't set up my thing tonight, but I, I thought about it, but I'm like, you know, oh well. <laughs> so when you're in the confidence, you're in your safe place. And it's the safe place where you receive that perfect love. Pastor's always preaching. It's the perfect love that casteth out what? All fear. So therefore, if I'm not operating in this perfect love, then I'm operating in fear. But once I'm operating in the perfect love, then that gives me my platform to create that safe place. And not only to create that safe place, but also to express that perfect love. Because perfect love is going to express itself. Now, come on now, y'all remember that song? Express yourself. Express yourself. Amen. 
Come on now, y'all know how I do it. Now come on now, y'all acting like y'all all tied up in here. Come on now. Y'all know y'all was jamming the NW. I know I was bumping the NWA when, they, when Dr. Dre was talking about express yourself. Okay? Okay, we cool? Love expresses itself. And so when that love expresses itself, it creates a comfort and a safe place for someone to want to come up under that and experience that love. But you got to express it. Didn't Madonna have a song called Express Yourself? See, see, everybody's talking about expressing themselves, expressing themselves, but then the, it's the kingdom people that gives the ultimate expressions of love. Amen? That's right. But we got to learn to operate in that, and that's where the safe place comes in. Um, turn to 1 John 4, 18, please. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. And Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, uh, 200 chiefs and all their kinsmen were under the command. So again, it's really pertinent, guys, for us to understand the times that we're living in. Okay, so First John, okay. Okay, so what does it say? There is no what? No fear in what? Love. Dread does not exist, but full-grown, complete Perfect love, what? Turns fears out the door and expels every trace of what? Terror. You got that? And then let's go on and it says, for fear brings with it the what? The thought of punishment. And so he who is afraid and has not reached the what? Full maturity of love. Let's pause right there. So you got to think about, where am I at in this love walk? And see, I know, as I'm looking at myself, and I, and I taught the pastor, I said, there's still some aspects of this maturity when it comes to my love walk that still needs to be tweaked a little bit, needs to be fine-tuned a little bit. So what I have to do is I have to continually yield myself to that, yield myself to this word, speak it over my life. So when I get into those situations where I'm able to express that love, then bam, that love will kick in and they're going to see the kingdom of God flowing through me. Amen. See, we're kingdom people, y'all. See, the, see, we got to understand the kingdom mindset. See, we think we oh, I don't want to jump ahead, Lord. I don't want to jump ahead, Lord. So let me just be easy. OK. It's a kingdom mindset. But see, the kingdom mindset only comes when you renew your mind. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, we just we just can't just just play church anymore because I feel that there are so many people that are out here that are dying. And if they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're going to spend an eternity in hell. So it is my responsibility to make sure that when we're talking about love and when we're talking about me operating in this confidence, operating in this safe place, letting people understand and feel the expressions of love, it's my responsibility. It's not an option. That's right. It's not an option, church. It is your kingdom mandate responsibility as God's people to make sure that God's love is continuously being expressed through you. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, church, say amen. amen. Okay, so uh, it says, for fear brings with it the thought of punishment and so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love. It has not yet grown into love's complete perfection. Now, let, let, me, let me just thank you, Lord. This is, no, this is not a condemnation sermon. See, the devil brings condemnation. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. So now if you're being convicted, that's one thing. But you're not hearing no condemnation coming from me. Okay? I just want to I just want to clear out. I, I just want to clear that and I'm going to declare that to the enemy right now. There is no condemnation coming from this speaker. Right. Amen. Amen. Because watch this. Just as much if I came at you like that, then I still got five more coming right back at me. Yeah, that's right. And I have to stand in accountable for that. And I hold what this to be able to do this so dear that I will never come at you like that. Amen. Right. 
That's the whole, it's the Holy Spirit. But the thing about it is, isn't it good to know that if I'm being convicted, that God loves me enough to convict me and says, look, I don't want to keep you in the same spot. See, the Bible says I'm trying to get you from glory to glory. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, see, <laughs> I, I, I just I just don't want to. I just don't want normal Christianity. <laughs> My life ain't normal. <laughs> I already know that. I already know my life ain't normal. So I might as well just go ahead and go for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I might as well just go ahead and go all out there. You know what I'm saying? I know everybody looking at that cat like he's weird and he's off the tip and all that. That's okay, brother, because when you see this tip, you're going to see the glory of God. Amen. And I'm going to keep moving from faith to faith and from glory to glory and watch what the Holy Ghost is going to do inside a man that yields himself to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Watch it. Amen. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Hallelujah in Jesus name. Amen. But that just ain't just for me. That's for all of us. See, the thing about it is when you're at the cross, it's all playing field. Everybody got the same opportunities. Amen. Amen. It ain't no big eyes and no little U's at the foot of the cross. It's just the cross and it's just the blood. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what enables us to continue to move forward. But here's the thing about perfect love. We can write this down. Perfect love, and I may say this last time, but just a quick review. Perfect love binds us together. The church, though made of many, thank you, Holy Ghost, many different individuals, we are still one. And we move as one. Just like if you're familiar with uh, gang activity or anything like that, those cats never come at you just one. You mess with one, you mess with all. You see what I'm saying? And that's the way it should be when it comes to fighting this devil. You messing with my partner, then you got to mess with all of us. But until we get to that point where we, where we operate like that, then it's just a bunch of little individuals. And it's just like, and we're all broke, broken up. But when the church becomes one, that's where the God can come in and power can be unleashed and we can see great and mighty things. That's why, watch this, that's why when they were building the Tower of Babel, what did God say? I better go down there and mess them folk up. Because see, they put in their minds and in their hearts that we can do this. We can build our tower to the sky up to heaven. And God's like, because their mind is made up, they're going to do it. And that's just a small example of the power of one. They had confidence, but see, they put their confidence in themselves, but we put our confidence in God. Amen. So number one, so, so, so love binds us together. Okay. And so because of that, we have to have the understanding every day, church, that we have been redeemed by perfect love. And that's why pastors say that's why we're free. The enemy would try to shift and move and stick and plot and plan to keep you bound. But Paul says, don't be entangled, son. You're not supposed to be entangled. You are free. And whom the son sets free is free indeed. Oh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I love this. Okay, watch this. I, I, I love just listening to preaching. I mean, that might sound boring to people, but I just, I just love it. I, I can sit and listen to preaching all day. It just blesses me. But the brother said this. He was talking about Joseph, right? And he said, you know what I love about Joseph, Pastor? They took his coat, yeah. but they couldn't take his character. That's good. <laughs> Come on, church. Come on, church. They took his coat, but they couldn't take his character. See, there's so many things that can be taken away from you, but boy, if you got that character, if you got that Holy Ghost character up inside you, you got that confidence deep inside you, God can give you back what you already lost. Okay? Yeah, oh boy, they, they, they're hating on Joseph, boy, they got mad, and I'm not trying to preach on Joseph, but boy, I just love that sermon, and I just love that, that point, that they took his coat, but they couldn't take his character. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. amen. And, and here's the thing about perfect love as well. Our minds 
must be renewed by love, by this perfect love. Because watch this. I said this a little earlier. See, if I'm not if I don't have confidence in God and if I'm not operating in the perfect love of God and I step outside of that, then I'm going to look at you cross eyed. See, I can't even see you right. Because see, I'm not, because see, see, I'm not operating in, in, in the perfect law of love. I'm operating in a whole nother total system. So therefore, when you cross me, I'm going to tell on myself today. Therefore, when you cross me, I'm going to look at you kind of funny. <laughs> I'm going to be like, Pastor, I'm going to send you to the moon. <laughs> all right, I'm going to tell, tell on myself. All right, watch this. So I was, coming, I was coming, we got off work early today and I was coming home and I got off the road. And then um, and I got to the stop sign. Right. So now to my left, there is a there's a there's a train track and the train was coming. And so traffic was backed up. Right. So now the green light turns on and I'm getting ready to go. Right. And this sister just looks at me like, watch me and pulls right in front of my car. Therefore, I couldn't even move. So <laughs> I did not operate in the perfect law of love. <laughs> I just looked at the sister and I went, I said, <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you, I'm not the only one. Thank you, Spence. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I did, I raised my hand and I looked at the sister like, and then she had a brother on the side of the car and the brother's like, oh man, you shouldn't have done that. Look at that brother right there. He, he had that level. And he just kept looking straight. He didn't even look at me. He just kept looking straight. I'm like, you the brother. And <laughs> but anyways, so the brother kept looking straight. And then I, I, so I had to go in the next lane and then go around. And then just for spite, I blew my horn at her, looking at her crate. And I said, and, all, and automatically. Now before all this, I was just in the car worshiping. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for revival, Lord. <laughs> Thank you that I'm being revived. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then just like that, you see what I'm saying? But, but, but that's the walk. You see how quick we can flip it on and flip it off, how the devil just try to put you, put situations in your way. Maybe that was a test or maybe I should have just, like pastor said, God bless you. God bless you, my sister, and the brother that ain't even looking at me. You know what I'm saying? God bless you. <laughs> but no, I had to do the total opposite, blowing the horn, giving the hand gesture like, yo, what's, you know? So, uh, so my mind needs to be renewed by that love thing, you know? So, see, I, see, you, you see? So, so that's, that's just critical. That's just critical. Because watch this. When I'm operating in love, what's going to happen is the darkness is going to tremble. Every time, watch this church, see, see, this is why the enemy wants to keep you complacent. Because see, as soon as you start coming up spiritually, soon as you make up in your mind, I'm going to walk this walk, I'm going to yield, I'm going to submit, he automatically is going to try to put situations, he's automatically going to try to put thoughts, he's going to try to put roadblocks, he's going to try to put stumbling blocks, he's going to try to do everything so that you will not operate in the power that God has bestowed upon you. And watch this. See, that's why, and thank you, Lord, for Pastor Bill Winston. I'm giving you a shout out, brother, on the radio here, whatever. He says that what's going to happen is as soon as he gets that thought in your mind, then he's going to get you to say something and then cancel out what you've been believing for. The Bible says that there's power and life in the what? Tongue. So as soon as he tries to, and that's why he's trying so hard to keep you from your destiny, to keep you from your purpose, to keep you bogged down so that when he puts those thoughts in your mind, you're going to speak what you think and therefore you're canceling the word of God. You're canceling the power of God. You are, thank you, Holy Ghost, you are deactivating your angels. Because as soon as I believe, Michelle, as soon as I speak that word, as soon as I put my faith and my trust in God, boom, my angels are being activated. Right, right, right. Amen. That's right. So that's why, you know, we don't really have to worry about anything. You got to learn to use your mouth. Amen. You got to learn to use the word. That's right. 
See, so many times, you know, and, and, and I know how it is because I'm kind of like that, you know. You, 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 you know, sometimes we just want to use our, our intellect or sometimes we just want to use our so-called wisdom and, you know, we want to just, you know, use our thing. But then that's, then what was the, what's the point in having the Holy Spirit if, if I'm just not even going to let him do what he got to do? See, everything he does is through love. Everything that he does comes from the place, the realm of perfection. Everything he does, he does it for your good. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so that's why you got, we have to discipline ourselves and we have to allow this love to permeate our spirits. Amen. So that we can move forward as kingdom people. Amen. Everybody getting something? Come on now. Is this real or what? You know, we're going to keep it 100. It's, it's all right. Okay. So now, as the darkness is trembling, we, our confidence is building. Yeah. You see? I said, what? I, said, I said that doggone joker. I said, I pray that the Lord cut your head off. I pray, devil, that the Lord will cut your legs off. I pray that the Lord will chain you. I pray that the Lord will bind you. Devil. Because, see, we watch, now watch this. We see all this violence and stuff on TV, but the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent must take it by force De see watch this when it comes to you the devil ain't playing That's right. you think he, he's just sitting around gonna let you just do what you think you're gonna do and gonna disrupt his plan see the devil got plans for you hallelujah yes. devil got plans for our children amen hallelujah and all he wants to do is disrupt that but you don't have to because Jesus already died from the A to Z, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He already got you from the time you were born. That's why he made you a prophet to the nation. We are prophets to our nation. Wherever you go is your nation. Amen. But unless you're operating in love and that perfect love and your mind's been renewed in this perfect love, then you're not going to be effective. Say, I want to be effective. Come on, church. I want to be effective. Yes, 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 we do, Lord. We want to be effective. And so when you're effective, then that's when the change will come. Amen? Change will come. Now, here's, and I'm going to kind of go forward because I know time. Okay, now watch this. Now, if I'm not operating in this love, in, let me make sure I got it right. Okay. Put up there uh, uh, Luke chapter 9 and starting at verse 51. Five, one. Yeah, 5 1. Yes, sir. And I'm going to do a favor. I'm going I'm to get my homegirl, Mick, there. You don't mind doing some reading for me, do you, boo? Now, when... Go ahead. Now, when the time was almost come for Jesus to be received up to heaven, mm -hmm. he steadfastly and determinedly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 52. Yeah, and we're going through uh, 55 there, Will, so thank you, sir. And he sent messengers before him, and mm -hmm. they reached and entered a Samaritan village to make things ready for him. Mm -hmm. But the people would not welcome or receive or accept him because his face was set as if he was going to Jerusalem. Pause. Pause. Jesus said, and, and, I, and I know this is a hard thing, and, some, and, and, I, and I've been kind of dealing with some of this, but... We all, everybody likes to be light. Who don't like to be light? And when you're in your settings, whether it's social, whether it's work, whether it's whatever, 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 we all want to be light. But the thing about it is, it's not going to always happen. Right. Right. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to give a blip about you. They're probably looking in your face and say, you blankety blankety blank, you know what I'm saying? But Jesus says, don't worry about that because they didn't even like me. See, everybody wants to be like, and they do, and they, and, and they used to be old saying back in the day when I was running, you know, uh, you, you do whatever you got to do to get in. 
You know what I'm saying? You do what you got to do to get in, to fit in, you know, so on and so forth. But the bottom line is, we're really not called to fit in. We might be called to get in, which is be, being, I'm coming up in, the, in this circumstance, I'm coming up in this situation, but not so much fit in. And it says it right here. They, did, they didn't want to hear what the man had to go. Let's go back one to 53, please. Thank you, sir. So see, the people didn't welcome Jesus. They didn't receive Jesus. And they didn't accept him. And I know sometimes, again, especially with young people, we all want to be accepted. But just know this. If they don't accept you, Jesus does. And I know that there are people, especially in this house, that will accept you. Amen. And we're going to welcome one. Come one, come all. You know, I, I don't care if you're homosexual. I don't care if you're trans or gender or what, all, that, all that mess. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a mess. That's a mess going on right now. They, they, they were talking about on the TV. Now they're trying to put certain stalls for particular people that feel like they're transgender. Just their own stalls. But then they get upset because they're like, well, why can't I go to the bathroom with everybody else? Well, fool, I don't want you in the bathroom with my daughter. I don't know what you're doing up in there. I'm going to tell you, see, Lord, pity if I ever had a, a daughter. Lord, have mercy or a son, you know. But Lord, have mercy. This dude trying to claim that he's a, a gal and, and then want to come up in the bathroom with my, with my sister, with my daughter, with my friend, whatever, you know. No, 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 no. But my point is we do welcome everybody here. We do welcome you here if you want to come. <laughs> we will say that. So, 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 so whereas the world is not going to accept everything, you know, and we don't either, but we do accept people, especially when it comes to kingdom. We are going to accept people when it comes to kingdom. And there may be a time where somebody may stroll up in here and they may be of whatever. We're going to love them just the same. I remember a pastor said somebody came in here and the brother probably ain't had a bath in a year or so. And pastor said he reeked from the time he came through the corridor to the time he sat. The pastor said he put his arm around him. He loved them. They embraced them. And that's what it's all about. And I know just that inch of love probably changed that man's life. Amen. Amen. OK. Next one, Pastor Willie. And when his disciples, James and John, observed this, mm -hmm. they said, Lord, do you wish us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? Mm -hmm. more, yeah. But he turned and rebuked and severely censured them. Mm -hmm. He said, you do not know what sort of spirit you are. Powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Now watch this. So these brothers with Jesus hanging with the man, but yet they were doing something that they felt they were doing out of love, but maybe it was really more so out of duty. And Jesus said, you don't even know what spirit you are of. That's why we have to learn how to treat people. That's right. I'm just speaking to myself now. I'm speaking to myself now. I'm, I'm just as guilty. Because if I'm not treating people right, then I don't know what spirit I am of. So it's either I'm operating in the Holy Spirit or I'm operating in a spirit. That's right. And you have to determine that within yourself. And I know that the Holy Spirit will show you, but it is critical that we operate in the spirit and not a spirit. Amen, church? Because, see, if you're operating in a spirit and then, like I said, if I, if I can't, if I'm not operating through the lens of perfect love and I don't see you right, then I'm going to be the next one that's going to call down fire on your head when you cross me. Amen. Yeah. Is, that, is that real or what, church? Now, come on now. Y'all talk back to me now. And it ought not be so. We don't need to be calling down fire and I'm trying to burn up Miss Sheila's hair. You know what I'm saying? That not ought to be so. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. I'm sorry. I just had to say something. Uh, see, now, now you're famous. Now your name is you're famous, girl. Okay. So uh, you don't know what spirit you are of. This is why the Bible says if we walk in the spirit, we will not do what? We won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Come on, church. 
<laughs> they look it up. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you. Walk in the spirit. Amen. Now, now we're going to switch gears. Now we're going to switch gears. Okay. So, watch this. We, when we're thinking that we're operating and doing something for God, and I think we talked about this last time, remember, Michelle? Eh, zeal. And ain't nothing wrong with have, being zealous. I think it's a great thing. And, the, and then, the, boy. And if we're, if we're going to be zealous, then again, what is pushing your zealousness? That's good. That's good. You hear that? What's pushing your zealousness? See, James and John thought that they were being zealous for the Lord. But what was pushing? What was the bottom line? What was the foundation of what they were standing on when they were being zealous? Self. It was self. Yeah. It wasn't the love of God. Right. So if we're going to be zealous then that means that we're going to be passionate. Um, and I'll leave it at that because y'all know my writing is not all that. So the definition of, of, of being of zeal is intense in feeling, passionate, intensely, enthusiastic, or devoted, so on and so forth. Again, we have to be mindful of this because there are people who claim they're doing things for God, but they don't know what spirit they're operating out of. Right. See, watch this. See, that's why, that's why I got to, again, I'm, I'm just going to keep hammering this in, Holy Ghost, but um, this is why we got to operate in the perfect law of love. This is where the confidence come in. So watch this. So if, if I'm confident and I know that I'm operating in the perfect law of love, then I can walk over and say, uh, hey, Spencer, man, you don't, know, dude, I was just praying for you, man. And, and I just saw this, that and the other and the Lord. And I just want you to know I'm standing in agreement with you. I'm not condemning you, man. I know it's a struggle, bro, but I'm with you. See, that's operating in love. That's right. You see what I'm saying? But, and, 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 being, and I'm being passionate. I'm being, I'm being sincere. I'm being kind. I'm being gentle. I'm being the things that the Spirit tells me to be. Right. But if I come to him and I said, yo, man, the Lord told me that you was out over at the juke joint and you had some girl up in the corner, man. What, what do you think you're doing, dude? What, what's up with that, man? <laughs> I, know, I, I, know, I know you're single and you want to mingle, you know. <laughs> I know you're trying to get your jig on and all that, man, but you ain't right. You ain't right. You ain't right. What's going to be more received? <laughs> See, it's the love that's going to be received. Even though I was being very, I'm, I'm zealous for the Lord, I'm passionate. I want to do the right things for the Lord, but again, there's a way in which it needs to be done. That's right. Amen. And then here's something that we, we get mixed up. Okay. And I'm going to want, okay. Okay. And okay. We have piety. Okay. And then pious. There is a difference. Okay, y'all with that? Let me, let me, again, the brothers wanted to call down fire from heaven on innocent people just because they didn't accept the Lord. I think the Lord can defend himself. Okay, but watch this, watch this. Piety, and if you're taking notes, I'm going to say it slowly. Piety is duty to God or dutiful conduct. I'll say that again. Piety is duty to God or dutiful conduct. In other words, watch this now. You think that you, you, you have zeal, that's good. And you think that you have piety, which is a form or in other words, love. Piety, love, so on and so forth. But your love, even love can become mechanical. Love can become dutiful. 
The scribes and the Pharisees thought that they were operating as God had conducted them to op operate, but actually they were just operating in self, which is piety. You see, all it was was just duties. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The same thing can happen in church, y'all. You get up Sunday morning, you do your three hymns, you sing, you, you give your tithes, you know, and everything just becomes mechanical and there's no passion, there's no zeal, there's no fire in what you're doing. And this is why the ch a lot of churches are dead. Because there's a, there might be some zeal, but there's a whole lot of piety going on in the church. And all it is is just religious duties. And you're not called to religious duties. Amen. Now, when we look at talking about being pious, watch this. It comes from, let me, let me I'm just going to write this down. And, I, and this is really cool, which means... Okay, so pious, this is the, the Latin word. I don't know how to pronounce that shell. P, pew, pew, I guess. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, Lord. Okay, and it means to clean or it means purity. So now, if I'm being pious, then it, that should come from a pure place. I can be pious if I'm operating in the law of love. The law of love or perfect love is pure. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And of course, we can go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and we can start talking about what love is. Okay, amen? And we know that God's love is the purest form of love. So therefore, it would, be, it would behoove me to be pious more so than piety. And that's what turns off a lot of people from coming to the church because when they come and they see us acting dutiful, mechanical, Mr. Roboto, Miss Roboto, then they're like, well, the Muslims do that. The Mormons do that. Jehovah Witness, they do that. You see? And this piousness is what should separate us from piety and our piousness should separate us from everybody because the kingdom is inside of us amen and the kingdom separates us from all other religions amen so I would rather be pious I would rather be clean and pure and be sincere about what I'm because I mean well they always say you can be sincere but you can still be sincerely wrong okay See, we got to get, it's not, it's, not, it's not a frame of mind. It's not an a, 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 a in-the-box mindset. You know why? I come to church because I'm just passionate because I'm going to experience God today. Or when you get up in the morning, oh, thank you, Lord, that I get to experience you today. Now, sometimes I try to get up and I get my morning prayer, and I'm, and I'm sitting up in my bed. And I'm like, Lord, I, you know I love you, but I'm sleepy. I ain't going to lie to you, man. Lord, I, I want to worship you this morning, but... I am kind of tired, so you just got to help, help wake me up. But, you know, but I am sincere, Lord. I really want to spend this time with you, so you just got to help me get up. And then when you go to work, Lord, I, I really want to be a witness for you, Lord. Now, you know, sometimes people will get on the nerves or this, see people say this, that, and the other. But, Lord, just I sincerely desire to be used by you on the job. I sincerely desire to be used to you at, at, at home. I sincerely desire to be used to you of you when I go to the Walmart or wherever I go. I pray that when I'm operating in love, it's a pious love and not a, a not out of piety. Is that clear? Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what I'm gonna do, let me let me check my check my time. Okay, good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm gonna read this. And uh, what I did is I, um, I went to Matthew Henry and I wanted to kind of see what he had to say. It's a commentary. He's a commentator. And uh, he's like one of the most famous, I believe. And so I was like, man, should I read this? Should I not? But uh, I thought about it and I thought maybe this would be good. So not trying to bore you and I don't like to, to read, read, but I think that this would be good. Okay. 
Now, this is talking about the same scripture right here. It's called the, the mistaken zeal of James and John. Now, and he's writing in Old English too, so I'll try to make it as simple as I can. <laughs> okay, the reproof he, Jesus, gave to John and James for their fiery, furious zeal. He turned with, ju with just displeasure and rebuked them. For as many as he loves, he rebukes and chastens, particularly for what they do, that is irregular and unbecoming of them under the color of zeal for him. He shows them in particular their mistake. Ye know not what manner of spirit and disposition you are of, how much there is pride and passion and personal, watch this now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my time on this one. Ye know not what manner of spirit and disposition you are of and how much there is pride, passion, and personal revenge covered under the pretense of zeal for your master. Everybody get that? Yeah. Okay, and then it says, there may be much corruption lurking, nay, stirring too, in the hearts of good people and they themselves are not sensible of it. Boy, is that powerful, is that powerful, okay? And it says, you do not consider what a good spirit directly contrary to this is, you should, and, and, and what spirit you should be of. Surely you have yet learned, though you have been so long learning, what the spirit of Christ and Christianity is. You have not been taught to love your, uh, let me see, have you not been taught to love your enemies and to bless them that curse you and to call for grace from heaven and not fire from heaven upon them? You know not how contrary your disposition here in is to that which it was designed of the gospel you should be delivered into. You are not under the dispensation of bondage, terror, and death, but the dispensation of love, liberty, and grace, which was ushered in with a proclamation of peace on earth, goodwill towards men, to which you ought to accommodate yourselves and not by such in, in, in precautions as these oppose yourselves. That old English boy. <laughs> but is that, but does that kind of yeah. make sense? Oh, yeah. fire, you see, they, they, it's good to be zealous. There's nothing wrong with that. But if your, thank you, Holy Ghost, if your zealousness is not filtered or flowing through the Holy Ghost, then that's where the fire is going to come. And that's where you want to start waxing and chopping people up. That is not the way we should act. That's why we need to be patient with one another. Be quick to forgive one another. And sometimes, you know, yeah, you know, somebody really crosses you, man, and you're like, man, how? But, you know, Pastor always says, just let, let God deal with that. And I know it's easier said than done. I'm not saying I got it down pat because, boy... I know Willie Tillman, boy, and if that flip, that, that switch flip, <laughs> but I try to put duct tape on that switch, amen. I try to duct tape that thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes, boy, that's, that, that, I'm, I'm ripping off the duct tape, what? <laughs> oh, man. But see, but see, but, but like Pastor says, it's, it's, it's not really complicated. And really, if you think about it, sometimes it's even funny when you kind of look at yourself, you know? That's why, you know, I don't want to get ahead, but that's why, I'm just going to say this real quick, that's why we have to self-inspect. We don't like doing that, though. We don't like self-inspection, but I'm telling you, it's wise to self-inspect. Amen? Because, cause, again... Lord, help me. <laughs> I'm just thankful. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thanking you to thank the Lord for that, for that Holy Ghost duct tape, amen. Because <laughs> Lord, right now, boy, I just want to... Amen. Anybody else with me on that? Okay, okay. I, I'm about to say, I, I, I hope I don't, I'm only one. So, so in essence, that is when we're talking about the Batak and when we were talking about the safe place, that's what we're, that's kind of the whole wrap up of that confidence, okay? So now what we're going to do, I got a little bit of time, but let's move on over to the Greek side. Let's, let's move on and see what this is all about. And I should have had this passed out. Spence, can you do me a favor? Bro? Make sure everybody, and y'all keep that for next time, okay? So, sorry. Okay. So now, when we're looking at the New Testament point of, of confidence, I'm going to start with my little, my little tabletop. And I had this specially... Yeah, <laughs> and I had this because when the Lord gave this thing to me, I'm like, oh, are you serious? And I told my brother, I said, look, man, this is what I need. And, you know, he's good with, you know, stuff like this. So and I said, look, man, I need this and I need you to help me. So thank God he did. Everybody got a sheet so we can move forward. OK. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna lean this right there. Okay, everybody got one, right? Okay, now watch this, now watch this. This is so powerful, okay. So now I got the, I got the one side that says the Greek side. The Greek side, everybody got that? The Greek, Jimmy the Greek, yes. everybody there? Okay, now listen to the definition of this. This is still, we're still talking about confidence now. We're still talking about confidence in God. Now watch this. It says, it says, if you see it, it says help word studies, and then it says 5287. And, and the term for it in the Greek is called hypostasis, or actually it's called hypostasis. but you know, being from the South, I'm gonna say hypo, but it's actually hypostasis. And watch this, it says uh, to stand, it says you got Hypo or hupo, which means under, and then histomai means to stand. So properly to possess or standing under a guaranteed agreement or in other words, a title deed. I'm gonna say that one more time. Properly standing under a guaranteed agreement or a title deed. And I know that we're all familiar with that term title deed. If you're purchasing a house, the house, once you finish paying for the house, then you get the title deed. But until then, the bank or the loan or the whoever has the title deed. Now, Jesus and his promises, his promises to us or his confidence to us is like a guaranteed title deed. Do y'all see that? Come on now. And this is something that you got to hold on to because the devil's going to test you in this. And let me see. Oh, you talking about you sitting up in church looking cute now talking about title D. Bam. Let me check you out now. And this is why you got to let him know verbally. This is why you got to get the word in your heart, because when he comes to try to snatch your title D. Now watch this. See, Adam originally had the title deed. Come on, church. I know Pastor done taught on this. Adam originally had the title deed, church. And then when the Satan came in and he fooled and tricked the woman and they ate the apple, then what did they do? They basically took their title deed and they handed their title deed over to Satan. And how many of us, if we're not operating in the confidence of God, and when we get tested, you just end up handing your title deed over to the devil? Come on now. That's right. You have a title deed. Yeah. It's the promises of God. Amen. Yeah. That's something that you have got to hold on to. Amen. If not, the devil's just always going to find a way to take your keys. Remember, he's after two things. I'm going to write it down. He's after your keys and he's after your what? Your power. Write that down. Make sure you write that down. That's, that's powerful right there. Satan. He's 
He's after your keys and your what? Power. Come on, everybody. He's after your keys and your what? Power. He's after your power. Amen. So this is and, and when and when I and when the Lord revealed this to me, I was just like, wow. So you mean to tell me that if I hold on to my title deed and I use my keys and I operate in your power that there's really nothing I can't do, Lord? He said, there's nothing you can't do. Isn't that, isn't that a, come on now, I, I, that blew me away. That, 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 was a, that was an awesome concept. He said that there is nothing I can't do. Amen? The Bible said that there is nothing impossible. With, you know, and, and sometimes I, I said, well, God, and, and, and I don't know if y'all ever do this, but I talk to him, I tell him, oh, I, I know you say ain't nothing po- impossible, and, and, you know, and I mean it with all reverence and respect, but man, Lord, you don't see this right here. And then he'll say, but I'm still bigger than that. Yes. And I said, well, Lord, you know, I, I got this going on right over here. I'm still bigger than that. And then what about this right over here in the corner? I'm still bigger than that. Your responsibility is to hold on to your title deed and do whatever you got to do to hold on to that. Because the Bible says that's why you got to protect your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. You got to protect that. I can't protect that for you. I can't do that work. Now, I'll pray for you. And I'll come in agreement with you because we're two agree, you know. If one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Would imagine what this little crowd right here can do and how effective we can be for this community. Because I'm telling you, church, and I told Pastor, and I'm not going to move from it. I don't care what the devil throws at me or what the, what the do they do, what they do. I'm believing God for revival to come to this country. And I'm believing it right here for the holy city. Yes, I agree. Amen. I'm believing that I'm going to see the glory of God manifested. I'm believing that I'm going to see the dead raised. I'm believing that I'm going to see the blind eyes open. I'm believing that I'm going to see the supernatural. As a matter of fact, I speak that over my life almost every day that I will operate in the supernatural power of God. See, the more I speak, the more the angels are activated. See, if you don't speak, then there is no activation. And then when you come up against the wall, you're wondering, what's up? What's up? What's up, Lord? Well, the Lord's like, I gave you the title, D. You got the title. I gave it to you. That's your responsibility. So don't get mad at me. And I'm not, I get mad at God. I get, I'm going to be real. I get mad at the Lord sometimes. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to be real. I, 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 I wish we had a real church, but I'm going to be real. I get mad at God sometimes. This is not fair. How can you let this happen? How can you let this go on? How can you keep this mess up? And pastor told me the other day, because it's working in you, Willie Tillman, a far greater glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There's a glory that is inside this man right here that is just exploding in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But that same glory is shared by God for all of us. It's how bad you want it. (laughs) I better not say that one, Lord. (laughs) I just thought of a song, but I better not say that one because somebody might misinterpret that song. But um, but it's 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 for you. It's for me. It's for all of us. Because you know what? Ultimately, see, I don't. I, and and Pastor knows my heart. I don't care if I ever get up here and speak. Because I ain't in it for that. Right. I'm just as happy. And I think that I preach my greatest sermons when I'm vacuuming the floor. Yep. Hallelujah. Yep. That's the one I'm preaching the best. When I'm vacuuming the floor, or if I'm wiping off, when I'm wiping off, the, I say, hallelujah, I get to wipe off the table for God. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God, I get to eat Justine's cake for God's glory. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I get to eat up all that good cooking in the back. Amen. 
Amen. <laughs> there, church, let me, if you never hear anything I said, hear this. There is more to God than the meets the eye. There is more to God than meets the eye, church. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, nor ears have not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man, what? That God has prepared for those who love him. See, I decree that. I declare that. So Willie's eyes have not seen, Willie's ears have not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of Willie the things that God has prepared for Willie Tillman because Willie Tillman loves the Lord. And you declare that over your own life, amen? Amen? Amen. You got to declare that over your own life. Let me see, keep up on the time. Okay, okay. Since it's almost 8.30, let's... let's, uh, I haven't even begun to really get into the teaching. <laughs> I haven't even used my table enough, but Pastor, I know Pastor's gonna give me another shot at it. So, so you hold on to that paper because there's just a whole, a whole nother realm. And what we're gonna talk about next time is we're gonna talk about tapping into the glory of God. And I'm telling you, God has just given me, a, I'm, and it's nothing to do with me. It has, I'm telling you, it, before God Almighty, it has nothing to do with me, but I just get excited about the word. I've always loved the word since I was a little boy. You know, it's just something this God just put into me. I mean, you know, but the thing about it is we all got our gifts. We all got our talents, you know, and you ought to be just as excited about your gifts and talents as I am when, when I'm using mine. Amen. Amen. And, and, and ain't no hating and ain't no it ain't got nothing to do with none of that. I'm just using my gifts, amen. 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 And it ain't, and there's gonna be used more and more and more. And watch this. And, and, and I said this one time uh, doing Sunday service. And when that angel swings that last, thank you, Holy Ghost, when he swings that last sword, and when the heavens open up, church, and the glory of God rests in this place, it's gonna be kingdom pandemonium up in here. I'm telling you, church, it's happening. It's happening around the world. And as a matter of fact, there's a great meeting that's going on March 6th. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, oh, I forgot the dude's name. But anyways, there, and, I, and I know that I know in April they're doing the uh, 100th anniversary of Azusa. And if you're not familiar with Azusa, that's when the Holy Ghost fell down out there in California. And that started the, the move of the spirit. And they're having their big movement. And I heard Lou Engle say, there are thousands of people on their knees praying for revival, praying for something to happen in this country. And I'm one of them right there with them. And I might not be able to go to California, but I'm praying and I'm touching an agreement with those brothers and sisters. And I'm going to see it. I, 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 and if I die and don't see it, I still believe it's going to happen even after the fact. Amen. 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 So let's just let's just take just I know it's getting just a couple of minutes. Let's just close our eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whoo. Sweet Spirit, thank you for what you've done in this place, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, that our hearts have been changed, Father God. And we pray, and I pray right now, I bind Satan right now in the name of Jesus, and I curse you in the name of Jesus, not in the name of what?